Is a child born in a Christian country equal to a child born in Mecca? Isn't there an injustice? In this case, what is the fault of people whose families are non-Muslims? Are all non-Muslims going to hell? At first, this may seem like a disadvantage for those who live outside of Islamic lands. However, as we get to the bottom of this, we can see that this is not the case. Let's discuss this matter together. Living in a particular land is not a must-have criterion in faith. There are many examples of this. For example, most of you know the story of Prophet Moses. Prophet Moses was a person who lived in the house of Pharaoh who was a tyrant that declared himself to be a god and grew up with people who were ignorant of faith. But in the end, he became a prophet. On the other hand, Prophet Ibrahim, peace be upon him, grew up in a dark place, in a tribe that worshipped idols, even his father. But yet again, in the end, no matter how far they both were from the lands of faith, they still came to the light. On the other hand, Asiya, Pharaoh's wife, found her lord despite Pharaoh by getting rid of the darkness of disbelief and not giving up her free will and choices. So think about it. Even Pharaoh's wife can have faith in such an environment. So let's look at it the other way around. Abu Lahab, Prophet Muhammad's peace be upon him uncle, was one of the closest people to our Prophet. But he didn't choose to have faith, even though he was the closest to enlightenment. While he appears to be the most fortunate, he has shown us that having faith is not related to living in a particular land. This shows us that even people living in non-Islamic countries can reach enlightenment via their efforts, whereas individuals living in Islamic countries may not. We can already see that many Christian or non-religious people that have done a bit of research have been finding evidence and converting to Islam, while Muslims who have not done any research can, on the contrary, turn away from Islam due to the state of taklid. Imitation. Therefore, as the Quran states, the key is for one to use his mind and do research. With this key, inshallah, the doors of faith will open. Humans are curious by nature. They even wonder about minor details. How can a curious person not ask himself questions about the most crucial issues such as, where did I come from? Who sent me here? And where am I headed? Why doesn't he investigate the answers to these questions out of curiosity? Don't you think there's anything strange about this? Let's say you're on a plane. You're sitting in a seat in the middle row. You look at the front rows and at certain intervals, they're taking people from the front seat and throwing them off the plane, replacing them with new people. In such a strange situation, wouldn't you say, what am I doing here? Where did I come from? And where are the people thrown off going? It's going to be my turn soon. Wouldn't you search with curiosity, wanting for an explanation from someone? And let's say at that point, someone comes to you and says, you don't have to worry about what's going on here. You can play any game you'd like on the computers in front of you. We'll serve you some food in a bit, and you can choose any delicious food you like. Just make yourself comfortable. In this case, you probably wouldn't even take a glance at the things offered to you, and you'd focus on the main thing. This world is just like a fast traveling plane. We opened our eyes and found ourselves in this plane of earth. However, we were so immersed in things that the soul enjoys, like computer games, time-wasting movies, and TV shows, that we didn't even realize we were on this plane. We couldn't see people dying every day and the ones that are born to replace them. We were just focused on the delicacies. That's where we're all to blame. Spending time with those toys that drugged us, stopped us from using our research skills in different ways. Although we research the job we want to get in the future, or even read articles about our diet, do we know what's waiting for us in the afterlife? Unfortunately, we're not concerned about what we should do beforehand. However, curiosity is the master of science. One who achieves knowledge will use their wisdom to discover the truth. If such is the case, the key issue here is the human being's desire and orientation, but the fact that people live their lives, prioritizing their feelings with temporary joys and seductive entertainment and setting aside the mind, sadly blocks the vein of curiosity. Of course, as a result, they may not be able to discover the truth. Another issue that is often misrepresented is the belief that Muslims are guaranteed paradise, but it's important to understand that faith is a matter of conclusion, so we don't know who will be a believer in the end. Muslims who have imitated faith, who don't know about Allah, do not strengthen their faith through research and evidence, and continue living ignorantly of the issues will be in greater danger. Because they have convinced themselves that their faith is sufficient, but it is unknown whether they will die as believers. Then, just as non-Muslims must research and understand their beliefs using facts and proof, so too must Muslims. And for the question of will all unbelievers go to hell? The concept of people of the internum period is important. When we think of the internum period, 
Most of us think of the period between our Prophet, peace be upon him, and the religion which Prophet Isa, peace be upon him, had brought. However, this term is used for any person or period absent from the light of a religion sent with the Prophet. Imam Ghazali makes the following classification regarding the state of the people after the arrival of our Prophet, peace be upon him. After the arrival of our Prophet, peace be upon him, non-believers were divided into three categories. The first of which are those who had not heard the call of our Prophet, peace be upon him, and were unaware of him. This class is undoubtedly the people of paradise. The second class, they heard about our Prophet's peace be upon him invitation, the miracles he performed, and his fine morals, yet they refuse to believe. This group is unquestionably the inhabitants of hell. The third class, this is the class that sits in the middle of the other two. Although they have heard of the name of our prophet, peace be upon him, they have not heard of his qualities and characteristics. These people knew the prophet, peace be upon him, since he was young and later as a false prophet whose name is Muhammad. They heard nothing but negative propaganda about our prophet, peace be upon him. Although Imam Ghazali does not say anything concrete about people in this class, he continues, In my opinion, their condition is similar to those in the first group, that is, those who have never heard of our prophet, because they heard our prophet's name combined with the opposites of his characteristics. This does not encourage people to think critically and conduct an investigation to discover the truth. When we look at the universe, we can see God's compassion in every detail. The needs of each creature are met graciously and mercifully. Yes, numerous needs and sustenance continue to arrive from areas we cannot afford, do not know, and do not expect at any given time. This shows the presence of a merciful, generous, and caring God. If such is the case, he is well aware of each individual circumstances, particularly for those he cares about most. When it comes to an essential matter of faith, he will, without a doubt, treat them with mercy and fairness. If that is the case, we should approach things in this manner, remembering Allah's generosity. Could Allah be cruel to the individuals you pity and sympathize with? Can we assume that Allah, who is loving enough to give you the feeling of sympathy, does not have compassion for them? Allah is also fair, and this should not be overlooked. There should be no doubt that He will judge fairly in the court established in the hereafter in such a situation. According to this information, if each person is tested within their means and is held accountable, we should ask ourselves, how well am I using my opportunities? To what extent am I able to fulfill the demands offered to me?